The quest for free power. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today I want to explore the topic of free power. When I was a boy on long road trips with my dad, he would tell me this story. It was a story of a man in his RV. This man had parked his RV under high powered transmission lines in a remote location and spanned hundreds of feet of extension cords on the ground parallel to the high voltage lines to collect essentially free power. The man was able to capture enough energy to meet his living needs and life went on. After many years of his theft, the power company eventually called caught on to the extra, unmetered load of consumed electricity and brought him to justice. As a child hearing this story and not really knowing anything about electricity, this was a fascinating tale. Although, as I grew older, it just seemed more and more ridiculous. How could it be possible? Electricity needs wires, at least anything like an electric heater, a fridge, or something that consumes a large amount of power. The story does suggest that he was turning on more than just some light bulbs. However, after learning more about the concept of induction, the more feasible it seemed. I've never heard of this story from anyone else and I was unable to find any news articles to verify its authenticity. Yes, I am aware there are many ways to steal power. That is not the goal or within the scope of this video. I want to find out if it's possible to collect usable power wirelessly through high voltage transmission lines. Let's take a look at a demonstration of electromagnetic induction. I've set up here a demonstration that gives some validity to that tall tale that I heard when I was a kid. I want to kind of demonstrate induction and how it's possible to pick up voltage or power wirelessly even when it's not intended or designed to. Your iPhone or something like that or Apple Watch or whatever, those can charge wirelessly. They'll have those little things because they're purpose built for it, but you can still wirelessly transmit and receive power even that's not the intended purpose. I want you to imagine that this wire here is our high powered voltage transmission line and then this light bulb is going to represent a town or a small city what's consuming the power. We've got our city lit up. This high voltage transmission line is in action doing its thing. Now I want to show you some measurements and how we can transmit power wirelessly. This part down here, these wires would represent the extension cords coming off from the RV that he's using to steal the power from the high transmission power lines. These wires aren't hooked up to our power source, they're hooked up to my meter so that I can show you that there is voltage increasing and decreasing as these wires move away from our high power transmission lines. As it stands right now, we already have about 500 millivolts of noise. This meter is plugged directly into the ground of my house. We're gonna think of that as kind of like our baseline Line. So any measurement that we have, we want to subtract this number from because that's just power floating around from the house from noise and induction and other things like that. It's not until I've turned on my high powered voltage transmission line that we're going to start to see that number go up. Now we're showing about twice the amount of voltage on our meter that it's reading from here, that it's getting picked up. A further way that we can show that that's what's causing it is I can simply move this away from the power source and we can see that number start to drop down. That 750, 800 millivolts is just more noise on the circuit. But as I bring it closer, we can see that voltage start to come back up. These are really, really small amounts of voltage. We're probably picking up about, you know, 300 millivolts of power, but that's still 300 millivolts. And remember, this is only 120 volt representation. I hope this helps you understand the concept of induction. There's a changing magnetic field going through this high powered transmission line. And because it's changing, it's able to induce a voltage on another conductor. Now that we have a basic understanding of induction, let's take a look at an experiment done by Double M Innovations YouTube channel. I'm going to give you an outline of his testing and link the full video down in the description. I'd really recommend watching his video for yourself. Although I was extremely skeptical at first, upon further examination, I believed his video to be legitimate. There are hundreds of thousands of scam videos about free electricity all over the internet, so it's important to look very closely when exploring this topic. As interesting as the video produced by Double M Innovations is, in my opinion, he didn't do the best job of explaining his circuit, equipment, or the reasoning behind it. So I went through the video step by step to help break it down. 
230 kV power transmission lines. 230 kV means that there's 230,000 volts of electricity being transmitted, and he estimated a distance of 40 feet from the earth to the power lines. The distance from the ground to the power lines will give us an idea of how strong the electromagnetic field could be. He strung 80 yards of coaxial cable running parallel to the high voltage lines. The fact that it's coaxial doesn't appear to have anything to do with his test other than I imagine that it's what he had available at the time. He had his coaxial cable elevated approximately four feet off the ground. I don't fully understand the reasoning behind this. My best guess is to ensure that the cable was completely isolated from earth. A full bridge rectifier. This would allow him to convert AC voltage being induced on his coaxial cable to be converted into DC voltage. He explains in the video that this is because the voltage he was reading directly from the coaxial cable when in AC form was too high for his meter to read safely. I don't really have any way of confirming this. A high voltage 88 microfarad 1200 volts DC capacitor. I speculate that this is because the amount of voltage drop caused by the full bridge rectifier made the amount of DC voltage hard to consistently measure. Having the DC voltage trickle charge a high voltage capacitor was my opinion a good way to capture reliable data. And lastly, an Electrotech digital multimeter that had been set up properly to measure up to 1000 volts DC. I wasn't able to find his exact meter online, so I'm unsure of its accuracy or specifications. From what I could gather in the video, to my understanding, this is the circuit he's built for testing. Something important to note, high power transmission lines create strong EMF, otherwise known as electromagnetic fields, and what makes induction work. This will cause an unshielded multimeter to have varied voltage readings by even being within proximity of a high voltage power transmission line. If we take a look at Double M Innovations video footage, his meter will read zero volts when he is not taking any measurements. This is due to the fact that one lead of the meter is always connected to the ground side of the circuit, draining off any potential EMF. EMF that could obscure his readings. In his video, he's able to charge his high voltage capacitor from approximately 180 volts to 900 volts in about eight minutes and claims that he was able to do so because of the high voltage transmission lines running parallel above his cable. Between my demonstration and the testing done by Double M Innovations Channel, we've established proof of concept. Let's try some different ideas to improve upon the design to see if we're able to get more voltage induced on our wire. If you did make it this far in the video, I'd like to kind of engineer, so to speak, a way that we can develop the best results for our induction, different variables that we can play with. One of those being the actual current flow through the, pa the high voltage power line. Um, this LED light bulb only drives draws about one amp of current, which is flowing through here. So I'll have to switch out. This is a very, very thin conductor. It's 28 gauge and it can only handle about one amp. We'll try a light bulb like this. This will draw about four amps. See if that helps improve it. I've also taken that same length of wire from the last demonstration and I just made a little coil with it to see if that helps at all. I did some toying around with it last night and the results are really inconsistent, which is frustrating. And then something else that we can do is add something, you know, magnetic to help improve the draw of those magnetic fields. Now I was trying this kind of last night. I'll demonstrate that really quick. Really inconsistent results uh, because I believe you're gonna want this conductor tightly wound around something like a nail or a bolt for it to have a better effect. But I'll just go ahead and show you the results that I've been coming up with. Let's get a baseline for our meter. Basically our floor noise is gonna be about 430 or so millivolts. And then if I just take this and I bring it closer, we're not really seeing an improvement from what we were getting last time. If anything, it's probably a little bit worse. And then something that I was trying was, you know, putting a nail through here, seeing if that kind of helps. And it does a little bit, but the results are really inconsistent because it's such a small amount of voltage. Now let's go ahead. I want, I'm gonna switch out our high powered voltage line and our load for more current. The insulation will be thicker, about 530. So we are getting a little bit of an improvement of our induction. Does this help at all? Not really. I mean, a little bit. I want to tightly wound as much wire around this nail. And then we're gonna try this bolt, you know, much more wire. This is probably about a foot and a half worth of conductor. We got about 450 millivolts. I think too, I don't know if you've noticed, as soon as I get my hand by it. Look at that, if I touch it with my finger. 
as an antenna. So let's let's wear a glove this time, electrically insulated gloves. But just to try to keep our results is now you're gonna notice up to here we've got almost 500 millivolts, and then this last little stretch to like basically butted up against the conductor. 600 millivolts worth of induction that we're getting this time. Half a millivolt or half a volt. 1.6 volts. I guess I just have one last theory to try and that would be running them in parallel. If going back and forth like this would be our only other option. I think we have our best results yet. Check this out. This is the same amount of conductor that was on our bolt. I unwound it. I just did it in loops so that it would be, the loops would be parallel to our high voltage line as opposed to perpendicular. And I wanted to see what kind of results that would give us. And I think that's the most promising so far. Now again, it, it has to be right on top of that, that conductor. Let's give it some time to stabilize. But that is a, a large improvement with our loop direction. Now something else we can try doesn't really help that much. Seems like the loop orientation, because look at how strong that is. We're getting a volt and we're... Now it's hard because my, my scale is also conductive. Hopefully that doesn't askew our readings too much. Right on top of it. If I really hug it up to 4.1. Wow, that's a, an amazing improvement. Very cool. Orientation of our loops drastically improved our measurements just to really maximize our induction. If we just really hug that little guy, seven volts. That's pretty promising. It's a couple of centimeters to get almost two volts. Very cool. It looks like we were able to change some of the design to improve the induction of our circuit. However, the problem, voltage drop. Just because we're able to gather and measure a certain amount of voltage doesn't necessarily mean it's usable voltage. Double M Innovation was able to collect a small amount of DC voltage and trickle charge a capacitor. But being able to trickle charge a battery or being able to convert the energy stored in the capacitor to usable power is another engineering challenge in itself. This is where load testing comes into play. Remember earlier I had spoken about Double M Innovation's full bridge rectifier and how it was the likely cause of having his self-proclaimed massive amounts of AC voltage turn into a trickle of DC voltage. This is due to impedance on our AC circuit and it's the biggest issue that you'll run into with this type of scenario. Essentially what you're trying to build is the most inefficient transformer possible. Let's take our more efficient setup from earlier and try applying an actual Actual electrical load. We have our improved design. I know I have another meter because it has a different setting on it that I'm going to show you here in just a second. Getting all the induction it can get. Look at that. Showing you know, six and a half volts. Mine is probably 500 millivolts for our floor noise. This is where load testing and voltage drop comes into play. I'm, gonna, I'm about to show you a setting on this meter here that us electricians use when we're troubleshooting long parallel AC circuit runs because in real life induction happens and noise happens on AC and DC circuits all the time especially in commercial applications or industrial applications where you have really, really long runs of AC voltage distribution in parallel. And so sometimes if we have a circuit that we believe is de-energized and we take a voltage measurement of that circuit, it can appear to have voltage on it still. So we'll utilize what's known as our low impedance setting on our meter, and that will essentially load test, put a very small, small load on the circuit to see if there's any actual use voltage. So even though we have almost seven volts here that we're showing, let's go ahead and put our meter to the low impedance setting. Now I'm on low impedance AC, and this tells me that there's no actual usable voltage present. I should be able to load test a circuit and still see a substantial amount of that voltage if it's actually usable. So this is the issue that you run into when you're building a very weak induction circuit is that the transfer of voltage simply isn't there. The circuit's not efficient enough. We have way too much of this air gap here. And in my scenario, I have this insulation on my high voltage power line. So hopefully that clears that up. In conclusion, yes, it is possible to collect voltage through the principle of induction from high powered voltage lines. Is it practical? No. The amount of copper and materials required, the engineering challenges, plus the impedance and voltage drop, it would be much more cost and time effective, plus 
was legal to simply buy a couple of solar panels, a battery, and put together a simple solar generator. At one point in time, this might have made sense to put together if you had an adequate understanding of electrical theory, but times have changed. Thank you for joining me in another adventure in the garage. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any ideas for this that you would like to see and possibly a part two, also let me know. Catch you on the next one.